There we go. Oh my gosh. I knew I saw something there. It might be a snook, dude. Wow. Oh, he's pulling. Oh gosh. Oh, he's got some good pull on him. Whatever it is. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. Okay, listen, it's not even open for debate. Catching snook off the upper Texas coast near Galveston is really hard to do. Now, don't get me wrong. There have been stories of people catching snook near Galveston, but let's be honest, it doesn't happen very much. That is why today I am traveling down to the very south tip of Texas to target this species. And I've only had one opportunity to target snook. And the time I did it, it was absolutely pure bliss. There we go. That's a fit. That's a snook. That's a snook. Yes. Oh my gosh. Oh yes. He's not he's not gonna be oh my god. That's a big one, dude. What? Oh my god. Dude. Dude. We're gonna get him in. We're gonna tire him out. That's a massive snook too. Wow. Well massive for me. My god. Dude, that's freaking awesome. Got you, buddy. I got you. Oh my god, he's too big. All right. <laughs> oh my god. No, no, I got him. We got him. Yeah! Oh, holy sh! <laughs> Dude, look at this fish! Oh my god! <laughs> oh, dude, it finally happened! Oh my god! Oh my god, dude, are you joking me? So what's the plan? The plan is to drive six and a half hours down to the very south tip of Texas, Brownsville, Texas to be exact. And the bay that we're targeting is actually not too far from Brownsville, but it sure does feel like a long way from home. But this bay is gonna give us the opportunity to catch species that's rarely seen in my neck of the woods. So I've loaded my Hobie Outback along with my rod and reel and a few choice lures. And I'm gonna actually meet up with two friends. Surprisingly, one of those guys has never ever caught a snook despite living in that area. So I feel like we have a lot in common. I've come down for two main reasons. First is to show you the beauty that this part of the Texas coast has to offer and give a stark contrast of what it is compared to the upper Texas coast, the Galveston, Freeport area where I'm from. And the second reason is to hopefully, hopefully catch some revered game fish and bring you some good fishing content. All right, so I just got to my hotel. We are staying at our local Walmart. Yeah, that's right. We're gonna be sleeping, roughing it out in my truck at, in the Walmart parking lot. What I like to do on my Texas fishing travels is I like to sleep at the local Walmarts. So I'm fishing in that general area because of two reasons. Number one, well, because it's safe. I can keep an eye on my kayak and there's lights. There's people always coming in and out of the parking lot at any time of the day. And number two, well, what can I say? It's free. I just don't like spending money on hotel rooms when I go travel. Not to say that I won't do it at times, but most of the times it's all about the travel, trying to rough it out and make the best of the situation. So I'm going to get some shut eye because I got to wake up super early in the morning. So I'll see you tomorrow morning. I finally arrived to the boat launch. I'm going to hit up South Bay today. That's the plan. I'm meeting up my friend Alec and I slept pretty good in the Walmart parking lot, believe it or not. Probably about a good five hours of sleep. So I feel really good, really excited. But I finally hit my first adversity. I've always, I always hit adversities when I do these Texas fishing travels. And the first one is I forgot my GoPro batteries at home, all 15 of them, because I use a lot of GoPro batteries to record all the footage. 
Good thing though, Alec is another YouTuber, which you guys are going to meet very, very soon. And he says he has a couple extra batteries that I can borrow along with a charger. So we're going to be constantly charging. So basically we're not going to miss a step. Hopefully we're not going to miss any fish caught. So that was a, that was a relief to me to hear that my boy has some extra batteries for me to use. But like I said, the target species is going to be snook and I'm not going to shy away from redfish and I heard South Bay has some massive, massive speckled trout too. So I'm looking forward to it. A different, different area to fish contrast to what you're used to seeing on the upper Texas coast, Galveston and Freeport. But yeah, really excited anticipation. Ooh, man, it's killing me and I hope you guys are here for the ride. Alec? How's it going? I'm Nick, man. Nice Nick, to meet you, nice man. Meet you. Finally, what's I going know. on, buddy? Just hey, ready, thank, ready thanks for, yeah, man. Thanks for coming out, man. Show me South Bay, man. I'm really excited. Snook, right? It's a beautiful Remember? place, man. It's a beautiful place. And the conditions today uh -huh. are special, dude. Really? Like, I mean, as you know, it's always super windy down here in South Texas. And Why is that, dude? Why, why is it always I, windy in South I Texas? I have no idea, but... Um, you know, we always have to plan around that. And whenever we see conditions like this, man, yeah. I like to head out to South Bay. Well, my name's Alec. Uh, I have a YouTube channel, uh, Mesquite Outdoors. Um, yeah, I'm, I primarily fish down here in the in the lower Laguna Madre, South Padre, Port, Port Mansfield, Aurora City. Uh, we do a little bit of hunting on our channel whenever we can as well. Uh, but yeah, man, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to doing some fishing today. Cool, dude. And we have a lot of common, right? You're a pharmacist too, aren't you? I am a pharmacist. What do you work at? I work at the VA. Okay, yeah. what do you do at the VA? I'm a ambulatory care pharmacist, so uh, I help like with... Uh, Warfarin clinic, diabetes. Uh, diabetes, yeah. Diabetes, like diabetes insulin, medication. all that stuff. Yes. Good deal, man. Yeah. Fellow pharmacist, man. Yeah. I'm always willing to help out, man. What's going on? Super <laughs> random, man. Super random. I don't know, man. You don't really see that many fishing pharmacists, right? No. <laughs> Especially YouTubers, right? Yeah. Most pharmacists I know, they play golf or... They're into like crypto coins and stuff like that. Oh, I know, man. <laughs> but, I know. but we're just into fishing, right? Yep. And you never caught a snook, is that correct? I've never caught a snook, man. I mean, Dude, it's you're not, from this area, man. It's not, it's That's not, not for excuse, lack of bro. Trying. It's not for That's lack not of trying. That's not excuse. <laughs> they're, they're, they're tricky, man. I, I think it's one of those things like yeah. like once you once you catch one, right? I think it, it, you kind of figure out where they are and stuff like that. It's and like you break the ice. Yeah, you know, they're, they're just a little different than like your redfish yeah. and trout. Like a lot of times they're, they're really sensitive to the water temperature. Interesting. So like when it's cold, they're, they go into the Brownsville, like the shipping channel yeah. or like or like in Port Isabel over here, like yeah. in those houses and yeah. stuff. But it's starting to warm up and stuff, so they should be, you know, slowly, you know, moving up onto the, the flats and stuff. So what do you think is optimal temperature for them to move up to South Bay? I, I don't have a, like a particular temperature, but uh -huh. I, I do know that it's kind of like once, um, you know, once the spring and, and, uh -huh. and summer start hitting, that's that's usually when they start seeing. But I've seen uh, some social media pictures that people have been catching them, you know, uh -huh. and they're not all in the ship channel, you know. So we're um, here in South Bay. Yeah, so I've seen some pictures in South Bay, okay. uh, in, in San Martin Lake, you know, so, you know, hopefully, you know, hopefully we connect. You Let's know. do it, man. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Good deal. That wasn't too bad. No, not at all, man. That was easy. Hey, Alex, so uh, is your is your waters this normally clear because I don't have daylight, but I can still see your fins in the water. So that tells me you got at least 12 inches of visibility right off the bat with no daylight. I mean, on a day like this where there's not that much wind, for sure, for sure, like the water be real clear in those grassy areas uh -huh. in the lower Laguna Madre, for sure. That's awesome because we don't, you know, I don't, I don't get the privilege to see this type of clear water up in Galveston. It's so muddy. Especially east of the, the intercoastal where it's like grass flats. Yeah. You know, if you, if you catch a good day where the, where the wind is not too bad, the water's real clear. Gotcha. And would you say South Bay is probably your favorite place to fish? Yeah, I, I'm a little choosy on the days that I come. Like, I try to come when the, the wind is a little lower than normal, just because I usually like to come this way. Uh, but yeah, you, you have the opportunity to catch snook. I mean, trophy trout, for trophy sure. Trout. Reds. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff in there. The, Bull reds go in there sometimes. Yeah, you know. So yeah, it's a special place. 
That's a diverse pool of fish. Yeah. No pun intended. I mean, I don't know if you're into that kind of thing, but I mean, a lot of birds. Like, cool. Like, really yeah. cool. B roll. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I love exploring different parts of Texas. That's why I'm really excited that you come out with me to South Bay. I've heard good things about it. Yeah. Man. I just never experienced it, and here I am today with you and uh, trying to show the audience how beautiful this bay is. It's so different. It's a stark contrast to what we have up there. Here's the shoreline right here. We're a little bit past the mouth of South Bay. I'm gonna do what I know best right now. I don't really see much bait being busted or I don't even see bait being busted at all. So I'm just gonna work the shoreline for redfish. I know there's gonna be red redfish in here. I mean, this is just, this is redfish territory. So we're gonna start blind casting everywhere. If we see a blowout, we'll throw at it too. Oh, dude, I just got, oh, there we go. That's a red. I saw that wake right there. And he's gonna be a little, he's gonna be a good guy, I think. He's got some muscle, man. <laughs> Lower Laguna Madre reds, a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna be a decent size, nice. Oh no, it's a sheep's head, nice. I'll take it too, man, they fight really good. <laughs> Wow, he got some muscle, man. Oh, you know what, man? This guy's foul hooked. No wonder he's pulling really hard. I mean, it is a keeper sheep's head. It just foul hooked him. Come on in here. Oh, beautiful fish right there. Whoo wee. Hey, yeah, you gotta be careful with these jokesters. They got some gnarly dar dorsal fins. We got the hook out right there. Gnarly dorsal fins and some teeth that'll make the orthodontist squeak. Oh my gosh, look at that beautiful fish, guys. Just, God, what a beautiful specimen. First fish, different species than what I usually normally target up in the upper Texas coast. Despite I foul hooked them, but still a catch of the catch. Really happy to get one on the board so far. Let's see if we can get another one. There we go. Nice trout. <laughs> it's gonna be a multi-species day, ladies and gentlemen. I'll take it. I knew there was gonna be good trout in here. Nice guy, nice spots on him. It's a beautiful day though. It's actually pretty cloudy. I thought it was gonna be really sunny, but I guess some overcast. But man, that's, it's, it's like miles and miles of bay, man. That's all you can see. It's hard to. It, we're like, we're like, where do we go? Like, yeah, I know. It's, it can. It's kind of like a. Um, what do you call those bombs that they throw in the SWAT team? It's like a, um, like just stuns you, stun, yeah. you know, stun grenade or something. It's like you're just stunned by the beauty. You know what I mean? For sure. <laughs> so I've fished this little channel back here. Uh huh. Okay. And, and, they're, they're, and you have pretty good success there. Yeah. And okay. then. This channel right here, I've never caught anything here, but I've caught every, you know, like reds along this. Perfect. In the All back right. here. So we could definitely check this out or, or this out, either way. Let's go to the one you have success at. Okay. The other thing that is good is that um, when the wind picks up, we'll just, 
It'll bring us right back. Perfect. Let's do it. There you go, my man. Speckled trout. Looks like got those head shakes. Oh, nice, bud. That's a keeper, dude. Good job, dude. <laughs> nice <Yeah>. job. <laughs> you know what I completely forgot, dude? I forgot that uh, this area, they had those new speckled trout regulations. Yeah. I, I completely forgot about that because it doesn't apply to the upper Texas coast where uh, I'm from. The JFK Causeway incorporates all the way down yeah. to the river. That's crazy, man, because in my area that's a keeper that's why i say keeper but not once you said he's not a keeper no more it just a light bulb just went <laughs> off and i totally forgot that fish kill really did damage to the lower laguna madre yeah. especially to our speckled trout so they increased the limit right now it's 17 is the minimum size up to 20 23, 23 17 23 and the bag limit is now two three three right three yeah. three yeah three that's that's um but that's good that's good for the yeah. fishery that's good for our resources yeah so i think they're gonna do that for 120 days minimum 120 days correct and, yeah uh, i remember that we'll see what the gill net surveys show and uh, whether they continue that for the rest of the year that's beautiful here man gosh look it's so different i mean look at those mangroves i hope you guys can see that on the gopro it's just simply like a different world it takes that song a whole new world to another level. Very shallow. One and a half foot. We're looking for snook, gentlemen. This is the type of environment that you catch. We're in Florida. <laughs> I mean, it reminiscent of Florida, right? Oh, dude, that's got nailed right there. Might have been a snook. So we're gonna work these mangroves just a little bit. Oh, I just, I'm just getting, I'm getting thumped, dude. It's so cool, man. How cool is this for real? Like I, there's, there's, you don't see this. You don't see this in Galveston. This is insane. It's, I'm telling you the truth, guys. You think you're in Florida? The water's clear as Florida. The mangroves are here. Insane, man. It's simply insane. There we go. Oh my gosh. I knew I saw something there. It might be a snook, dude. Wow. Oh, he's pulling. It might be a red though. It might be a good red. Oh, if it was a snook, he would have jumped. Oh gosh. Oh, he's got some good pull on him. Whatever it is. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I think it might be a redfish. Oh, dude. Oh yeah, that's a red. Nice keeper red. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Man, for a moment I really thought it was a snook. But I saw that water movement. That jittery bait just go crazy through in that area. He hit it. Second time was a charm. Oh, nice. Whoo! Good redfish, man. Oh, look at that keeper red, ladies and gentlemen. Beautiful with a heart shape black spot. Lower Laguna, South Bay Red. He is gorgeous. He fought really hard too. He's not a big giant. I would say he's probably about 20 and three quarters, probably right at 21 inches. Still, nonetheless, such a beautiful specimen there. Let's let him go. There you go, my man. Thank you, beautiful. Woo! Seriously, I can't explain how beautiful this is. This is something unworldly. I know I keep repeating myself, but I've never, ever, seen this type of fishing before mangroves clear water i mean you got at least minimum two foot of visibility full of grass mangroves right over here i mean this is seriously paradise ladies and gentlemen now all we need to do is catch a snook dude this is this is crazy bro i i can never imagine this is in texas man I mean, this is simply remarkable. I mean, wow, look at that big stingray. He's right in the water. It's so crazy. I mean, we can sight cast fish all day long. It's just, wow. I'm breathless, ladies and gentlemen. This is crazy. Oh, oh my God, what was that? Dude, there was bait just went crazy in front of you. 
You got him? Red? That sounds like a keeper, bro. <laughs> there we go. Got a strong current, so they feel like they pull. I believe it's gonna be a. What is this, Snook? Oh, it's a big speck. <laughs> Man, they got my heart racing, Justin. Just, just for a moment of time, but I would take it. This is a keeper spec for down here for sure. Come on in here, bud. I got you. Look at that spec, guys. That is probably 18, 19 incher. Whoo, nice, beautiful fish. We're gonna definitely let this guy go. I you know, actually, I think I want to measure him, take some pictures, then we'll let him go. <laughs> 19 and a half inch speckled trout. Beautiful, dude. Thank you. Beautiful guy right there. There we go. He's got a little bit of pull on him. He might be a keeper red there. Close to it. Oh yeah, he's got some strength on him. It's a nice fish. Oh yeah, beautiful red. He's gonna be a keeper for sure. Come on here, buddy. Oh my gosh, you're so beautiful. These lower Laguna Madre reds, they pack a little attitude. They're a little sassy. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, God, look at that. He fell for the curl tail. Come on, buddy. Come on in, you're done. Man, the water's so clear. They look so good. It's like, it's like you know, they're made for this type of water clarity. It just looks so pretty. Yeah, he's going to be a little bit bigger than my first one. Probably about 22, 23 incher. Nice red right there. Ultra light, old 18 suppressor. Got the Daiwa Zillion SPTW and on the Bugs Curl Tail. Really solid setup. You know what, guys? I really wanted a target snook, but, you know, I'm not going to complain. Look at that red right there. Yeah, he's going to be 23, pushing 24 inches. The one thing I did notice about these Laguna Reds is they're not that fat. I mean, up there in Galveston, they're like footballs. Literally like footballs. And they are really thick with thick girth. But these guys right here down here are really not that thick. I don't know if it's... Maybe they're not just getting enough bait or what's the issue, but either way, I'm happy. Got them. Just fishing really shallow near the mangroves. And gosh, beautiful. All day long, baby, all day long. Yeah, they're liking the shrimp imitation. Now that the fishing is over, it is time to get our grub on. As with all Texas fishing travel videos, I try to showcase a hole in the wall restaurant that's very local and that's only available in this area. Alec, the guy that I fished with today, he recommended, well, he highly recommended this restaurant. It's called Marisco's De La Rosa, no relation to MDLR. And he said, this is authentic seafood that I need to try out. And I just did a quick Google review. It's got like five stars, over a thousand reviews. So it looks pretty good. And when I pulled up, it looked like a hole in the wall restaurant. So it must be really good. So let's go check it out and see what they got. Based on the waiter's recommendations, this is my first time here. He said I get the La Famosa Marsicada, which is our famous seafood platter, which is this picture right here. He says that's an absolute top seller. He also recommended I try the shrimp cocktail right here. So I got a small size. So we'll see what's up, man. I'm really, really hungry. So, I mean, anything's gonna be pretty good. This right here is a shrimp cocktail. It looks pretty good. That's how you do it right there. God, that's a lot of food. I don't know if I can finish all this, but this is what's recommended. Let's eat. 
All right, so we got a, a combination of things going on. We got grilled shrimp fish, fried fish, calamari, shrimp. Oh man, it's just a lot of things going on. Not bad. I'm not sure what kind of I'm not sure what kind of fish this is. Hopefully they caught it right here in San Martin Lake. Butterfly trip. So far I've been eating just the grilled side of it. It's not that bad. It has a has a very sweet taste to it. It's not as salty as I thought Mexican food would be, but I'm not sure exactly how seafood is supposed to taste on the Mexican side, but it's not bad at all. I do like the, it's like a gumbo sauce. I'm not even sure what it is that they put underneath the grilled fish. It's mixed with vegetables and shrimp. It's not bad at all. It will be interesting though, just to know what kind of fish this is. I do like how it's diverse and you get a grilled side as well as a shrimp uh, fried side. Let's try the grill let's try the grilled shrimp here. The grilled shrimp is pretty good. It has a nice buttery sauce to it. Now that we try the grill, let's try the fried fish. I think it's the same fish species, whatever it is. Maybe tilapia. I know it's not catfish. The fried part, the fried shrimp is much better, in my opinion. More flavoring. Although the grill part is much more healthier. Gotta put that ketchup on. Man, I am stuffed. I pretty much ate my whole meal. Thank you to Marisco De La Rosa for giving me a good time. I mean, they had guys flying back and forth at all the tables. It is a true sense of a hole in the wall restaurant here only in Brownsville, Texas. And honestly, to be fair, I really don't know what authentic Mexican seafood tastes like, uh, but my dish was pretty good. It had a mix of different flavors. You had grilled and you had fried. So it was just like a, a big melting pot of you know different flavors, different ways of cooking fish and seafood. It was pretty good. The calamari was a little bit dry and rubbery in my opinion. But other than that, the sauces, the fish itself, the fried fish was pretty good. The grilled, the buttered shrimp was really good and that gumbo type sauce that they put under the grilled uh, fish fillet was excellent too. Uh, from a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best, 1 being that I don't recommend, I would give this place an 8.5 and, and honestly I would have given it a higher. However, like I said, I don't really know what Mexican, authentic Mexican seafood tastes like but from the dish I had today, it was pretty good. So definitely a spot that you need to check out if you do come to Brownsville. So you may be wondering yourself, was this Texas Fishing Travels a complete failure since I wasn't able to catch a snook? And honestly, to the contrary, it was a great success because what I really wanted to do was show you how beautiful this part of the Texas coast was. And on top of that, I had great food. I fished with great company. All in all, a great, great experience. It's all about traveling, right? And exploring and going to the unknown. I mean, I had a, I had a lot of fun to be honest with you. And yes, I wish I did catch a snook and trust me, I will do it again very soon. I already had it planned out in my head. There's gonna be another video of me, hopefully, hopefully catching a snook. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit that like button and I'll catch you guys on the next one.